That was what gave us the edge over the rest of the world, because no one even thought that you could do that. But what if some parts of the message are still lost? One can't avoid errors in data transmission. That problem was solved through clever coding, using extra copies and error correction. The message can now be unpacked and errors corrected instantly at the other end. That was the theory. Would it work? There was a really good moment when the signals were bouncing all over the place and the error rate that we measured said 0 0.00000. At that point we said, yes, we've cracked it. They'd come up with a solution so perfect, it seemed no one would be able to do it better. Now, to sell their invention to the world, or not. They were generally polite, but you got the body language that it was a bit of a yawn and they weren't really interested in these crazy guys from Australia. Remember, this was 1993. At the time, their invention wasn't even commercially viable. Chips weren't fast enough to run it. In 1996, their invention was granted a patent. Then, as the digital decade surged forward, it became clear CSIRO's method was indeed the best. In 1999, it was written into the International Standards for High-Speed Wi-Fi. From 2000, high-speed Wi-Fi began to appear in laptops, phones, homes. Well, we weren't concerned that they'd stolen the technology. We thought, this is great, everyone's using our technology. I think we were a little bit naive as to how easy it would be to get the recognition for our patent. In 2002, Nigel Poole joined CSIRO. A businessman, he was determined to claw back the royalties he believed they were due. So we wrote letters to the companies who we thought were using our technology and we gave them a certain amount of time to have a think about that and of course in the end um, none of them decided they wanted to take a license. And so we decided to have a test case. In February 2005, CSIRO sued the tech company Buffalo. Suddenly, the big guns unexpectedly came out. Dell, Intel, Microsoft, Netgear and Apple all sued CSIRO to declare its patent invalid. Well, it certainly raised the level of excitement in the process. Led by Nigel, they decided to counterfile against a further eight companies at the end of 2006. These were deep waters, the biggest fight CSIRO had ever taken on. And it wasn't just about the money. At stake was their people's legacy as the true inventors of high-speed Wi-Fi. But they were up against 14 of the most powerful computer companies in the world. You know, I know that they really did invent it, because I was there. You know, they have people hire lawyers to say, no, you didn't. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit confronting. Every year there'd be, seem to be another flight over to the US where I'd have these lawyers throwing documents at me, which I'd written maybe 15 years ago, and pointing to page 21 and saying, what did you mean by that? And this went on and on. But the showdown, when it came in April 2009, seemed all too soon. Fittingly enough, in a small courtroom in Texas. When I walked into the courtroom, and there was the swinging doors, the judge sitting at his large desk, and the jury in the jury box, and all these lawyers sitting in tables in front of you. It was very nerve-wracking. Meanwhile, outside the court, a second team were deep in their own drama. So we have no idea what's going on in, in the courtroom. But uh, we're, we're meeting with uh, the 14 defendants trying to settle the, the thing. But as the days ticked by, one by one, their opponents began to lay down their guns and settle. 
I was in the office doing some preparation for my next appearance in the court and suddenly I hear this almighty cheer. The last company had, had agreed to settle the case. I've never seen so many smiles on 30 people's faces. After I just sort of sat down and went, ah, oh, that's over, that's over. With the trial terminated, they never did get to hear the jury's verdict. But to the original team, it feels like the vindication they've so long sought. They really did invent high-speed Wi-Fi. Every time I uh, you know, pull my mobile out and think, yeah, yeah, I, it's, it's got the same, the same technology, my laptop has the same technology, you can't help but feel pride. And it all came about from the Blue Sky Research Field of Extreme Radio Astronomy.